Now let's talk about what perimenopause is mm -hmm. and when it begins. Sure. So I like to start in the middle because there's a lot of misconception around terminology. So medically, and I think this is a problem, menopause is defined as one day in your life, one year after your last menstrual cycle. Yes. Okay. Most women know that. Everything after that is postmenopause. So what's perimenopause? So perimenopause, the best I can define it is, remember, we're losing ov ovarian function our whole lives from the yes. day we're born. However, there's a point in time when your body notices. So you said that we have only 10% of our eggs by left 30. by 30. So is that when it starts noticing? So it depends on your body. It's when your body is like, something's not right. It could be mental challenges. It could be gut challenges. It could be inflammation in your joints. It could be irregular periods, heavy periods, light period, no period. You know, it's really variable how it presents, but something has changed. Nothing in your world has changed. Something inside of you has changed. Okay. And so perimenopause is often defined by irregular periods, like in the medical journals, but it's a lot more than that. It's seven to 10 years before your period stops. So 35 to 45, perimenopause is gonna begin. You're gonna start noticing something's not right. It could be the cliche symptoms of hot flashes. You know why hot flashes define menopause? No. Because you can't blame it on anything else. Oh, that's unless true. Unless it's tuberculosis. Like nothing else causes a hot flash, pretty much, unless you have a fever, then menopause. So that's why it's the heart, you know, the bell ringer of menopause. But what other symptoms might you be experiencing? Brain fog, you know, arthralgias, frozen shoulder, joint pain, gut, dis you know, constipation, diarrhea, you know, you name the organ system, Inf uh, asthma flares, new asthma, new autoimmune disease, dry skin, dry eyes, dry vagina, dry mouth. It goes on and on and on. So it would seem, based on the science here, that any time a woman goes to the doctor, and has any kind of complaint like that in terms of the symptom, that one of the standard procedures should be test your freaking hormones. So that's another problem. The brain is pumping hormones as hard as it can. Right. And so in that perimenopause, I call it the zone of chaos. Yes. You're squeaking an egg out now and then, but you're having massive surges of it. We'll see estrogen levels like you were pregnant with triplets. You know, three, 400, they're temporary because you're you had to work so hard to get that egg out, you know, and then then it just plummets down to nothing. Is this why our emotions are all over the place during the month? That's what we think. That makes perfect sense. Because if your system is in chaos, regardless of your age, by the way. Right. But if your system is in chaos because it's having to work so hard to just do the thing to try that it's to do the to basic do, biologic function. No wonder you start to feel all sorts of things go haywire. Mm -hmm. And so do the same things that you would recommend for a woman who is officially in menopause, are those the same things that you should be doing if it's perimenopause or it is the estrogen deficient symptoms that you experience in the second half of the month? So this is where the art and the science come in in perimenopause okay. because some women will do well with just some progesterone support. Some women will need estrogen and progesterone support. We don't have a lot of great studies on the best way to support a woman's hormones in perimenopause, so it's a little bit of the Wild West. We also, we're not teaching our residents, medical students, trainees, how to recognize it, how to diagnose it. You really, I don't need blood tests to diagnose perimenopause. I just listen to the patient and believe her. I'm sitting here reacting to everything that you're saying because I'm thinking, I don't even really remember anybody talking about mm -hmm. perimenopause is anything other than your period might get irregular. Mm -hmm. But none of these other symptoms. I mean, this is very illuminating. And I feel kind of bad that I didn't know that because yeah. I had no clue what was happening. Right. I would love to now focus on menopause. Mm -hmm. And are you still in a monthly cycle? Like what is happening when no. you're in menopause? So once those ovaries fail, and I know that term is harsh, but you know, once the ovarian, once the eggs are gone, no more periods. You will, any vaginal bleeding after menopause needs to be evaluated by a gynecologist. There might be something wrong, okay? You should never have another period again. So okay. your periods stop, or the, first they become shorter, longer. It's really, it could be anything, but eventually they just kind of stop. Some women will wake up and never have another period. Others will have this kind of skipping months and months between until they finally end. Mine was like Chucky. 
just kind of kept popping up, you know, <laughs> rawr, rawr, you know, like, oh, I thought you were gone. Yeah, and here you are again. Yes. So once you've gone a year, then most scientists agree that you're done. Okay? okay, if you're over the age of 45 and you hadn't had a period for a year, you are a postmenopausal woman. That's the clinical definition. And what is the technical definition of when you've moved from perimenopause to menopause? So period of men menopause is that one day we're like, yep, it, it signifies your ovarian failure. You will never have another egg that's able to be fertilized again. Okay. The end, there's no more left. Okay. So, and then for the rest of your life, you're postmenopausal. Now, some of the symptoms you experience get better. It might take several years, like the hot flashes do tend to go away. The sleep disruptions, if they're related to hot flashes and night sweats, do tend to get better. It might take seven to 10 years. Seven to 10 so years? Forever. I think you said go away like, I'm thinking like <laughs> a couple weeks. It might take shorter, but I, I want to give people a very clear picture. And so a lot of women are like, well, I went through my menopause. Like, I'm done with that. And I'm like, your bones are still deteriorating. Your risk of cardiovascular disease is still increased. Like, those, your genital urinary system without support is failing. And, you know, these are the things that don't go away in your postmenopause. I just realized I'm talking about it wrong. Because I always say I'm in menopause, I'm going through menopause, I've hit menopause. And you're saying once you actually get to that date where you've had not, you haven't had a period for a year, it ain't coming back, that's menopause. But technically now, I'm in postmenopause. Forever. Wow. So when you are postmenopausal, do you mm -hmm. have any estrogen at all? So there are four estrogens that our body can make. The number one heavy hitter, most biologically active, does the bulk of the work is estradiol. And that's what's mostly created in our ovaries. Okay. Testosterone can be peripherally converted at a very small rate to some estradiol or estrone. So estrone is what's created in our fat cells. So the heavier, the more subcutaneous fat you are, the higher your estrone level is, which is why heavier women are more likely to have endometrial cancer and other estrogen-related cancers. Is this also why one of the symptoms when estrogen starts to decline is that your arms get flabby and you start to gain weight around your stomach because your body, once it's signaling there's not enough estrogen being created in your ovaries, your body starts to try to create and hold on to it in your fat? So there are theories around that. The anthropologists are, are scratching their heads because there's only five mammals that go through menopause and four of them live underwater. Beluga whales and a few, one of the killer whales. <laughs> yeah. Really? So yeah, no other mammals on land really that we can figure out. Maybe one giraffe. They're looking at one particular giraffe. Go we are like really unique in that we have a menopause. And we think because we've just artificially extended our life past our evolution with modern health and yeah. sanitation and all the things that keep us alive. That's wild. We weren't designed to live this long. So we have estradiol. Yeah. That's gone. Okay. The ovaries can't make that anymore. Maybe a tiny bit, but really not clinically significant. Estrone, really weak estrogen. Okay. Estriol, which is created in our placentas when we're pregnant, but pharmacologists have been able to recreate it, and it's used in like one or two formulations of hormone therapy. It's not one of my favorites. And then there's this other one called esteritrol, very fancy, that the fetuses, that are, when we're in the womb, that's another one that we make with fetal cells. And that one has also been synthesized and is used in a couple of, one, hormone replacement therapy. I'm, that's not one of my favorites. No, but I mean, in your body. So your estrogen level is not zero, but your estradiol, but it's less than 1% of it was when you were 25. And so let me the, give it to you that way. <laughs> got it. Less than 1% yeah. of what it was when you were 25. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. And your body needs it. It will function better with it. And you will not die without it. You'll just die faster and less healthy. And, with, and miserable. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm trying to digest this stat. I want to make sure you didn't miss this. When you think about the estrogen levels that you have at the age of 25, you only have 1% of that mm -hmm. when- Of estradiol, yeah. You are postmenopausal, And the only sources for your body to create it are ovaries or- and a little bit in the periphery. You know, and in other cells, you know. It. That's it. Wow. And our march to death begins. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, Dr. Haber, anymore. <laughs> because you are here to make sure that does not happen because we are capable of doing simple things to optimize our health yeah. and live a long and happy, life. juicy, happy. amazing life. Vibrant. <gasps> hey, I'm so glad you're here. I promised you I'd be in the studio today. 
Shay all day, she's here too. You can't see Maddie, but she's right behind you. So we are about to have the amazing Dr. Mary Claire uh, Haver jump in that seat. And I just wanna tell you, this is gonna be one of those episodes that's gonna change your life.